let the interview begin. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Full Nose Podcast. I'm here with Paul Lewis. Hi, Paul. Thanks for being here. Pleasure. How are you, Adam? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good, good. Good. So um, how did you get into and why did you get into the acting industry? Oh, gosh. I don't know. I guess I've always been a performer ever since I was a little boy, uh, you know, running around the house doing impressions of celebrities and playing with puppets all day long, entertaining the family. So yeah. uh, I guess as I grew up, I decided I wanted to make a living at it. So that's why I got into acting. Awesome. Um, started, off, um, started off in theater. I uh, was born and raised in New York City, and I went to a school called the Amer- American Musical and Dramatic Academy uh, in New York City. And, uh, you know, learned all about singing and dancing and acting, all that fun stuff. And uh, after I left there, um, I moved down to Florida and I got very, very busy in uh, Florida theater. So I do a lot of musical theater down here in Florida. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's so, pretty much it. So what made, the, what made you want to make the transition from theater to um, TV? Well, while I was living here in Florida, um, occasionally do commercials, local commercials, and uh, a couple of little video gigs here and there. Um, but I got a call one day from a casting director who was casting a TV series, uh, Miami 7. Oh, okay. uh, and uh, it was going to be filmed here in South Florida. And they were looking for two local actors to play the parts of Howard and Marvin Berlotti. Um, and so the casting director knew me from theater and she knows that I do a lot of funny characters and uh, I'm a pretty versatile character actor. So she knew that I was very rubber faced and, you know, could be pretty funny. (laughs) So she gave me a call and uh, told me to come down and audition. And I did. And um, funny story, at the time that I was auditioning, I was playing the part of a young Albert Einstein in a a play down here in Florida. So my hair was all crazy and I had this (laughs) much. And um, you know, the part called for a nerd, like a nerd character. Yeah. So when I got to the audition, there were all these guys, you know, with short hair and glasses and, you know, looking like a typical computer geek type of nerd. Yeah. But I was a different kind of nerd. I was a nerd with a mustache and crazy hair. Um, and they brought me into the room. And luckily, they paired me up with Alfie Wise, the actor who wound up playing Howard Bellotti. And as soon as the camera started rolling, the chemistry was right there. I mean, we really, really were in sync with each other. And I remember the director and the producer of the series was right there in the room. And as soon as we finished auditioning, they got up on their feet and they came to us and started talking to us. That never happens in an audition room when you're auditioning for oh, your film. So right then and there, I kind of knew that was a good sign. And sure enough, before we left the, the office that day, they offered us the roles right there out of everybody. So uh, it was meant to be, Adam. That's amazing to hear. Wow. So what was it like working on Miami 7? Oh, it was great. Um, Like I said, I was a theater actor. So that was my first television series where you actually saw me on camera. And what I mean by this, I also have a background in in puppetry. I'm a puppeteer. And um, I did a children's series that was here in America for about two years. But you never actually saw me on camera. You only saw my puppet, you know, and, and heard my voice. So this was the first time that I ever did a TV series where you actually saw me on camera right um, whereas my partner Alfie he had been a, a, a movie star pretty much here in the states you could find him in pretty much every single one of Burt Reynolds movies Alfie oh, has a role uh, he's done a lot of TV shows in the 80s and the 70s so um, he's, he's been around the block a few times so I was thrilled to be able to work with him um, so yeah that's pretty much nice so what are some of your other favorite roles you've been part of then one of my favorite roles? Yeah, that you've been able to do, yeah. Yeah, well, needless to say, Marvin Bellotti is a very um, lovable character, and the fans seem to still like the characters of Marvin. So uh, that was a character that's pretty near and dear to me. Um, and I think also because of the experience, because like I said, it was the first show that I did. Um, so it's always going to be a fond memory. As far as theater, I think some of the best roles that I've played is, uh, well, Little Shop of Horrors. I played Seymour, I played the lead part in Little Shop of Horrors when I was a younger man. Um, I actually won a local a Best Actor in a Musical Award for that role. Nice. Um, and I think Avenue Q, because uh, it involves puppets. And um, what else? I love playing the role of Albert Einstein, the role that I spoke to you about yeah, earlier. Yeah. That, was, that was a great funny, that was a play called Picasso at the Le Pan Agile. And it was written by 
um, Steve Martin. You know who Steve Martin is, right? Uh, I think so, yes. Steve Martin, the American actor, comedian, who's been around for quite some time, but he wrote this play and it was a fictitious meeting of Picasso and Albert Einstein when they were young oh, in, a, okay. in, a, in a bar in Paris somewhere in the old nice. days. So it was really funny. Yeah. And what do you feel like are some of your um, more personal or biggest achievements you feel like you've achieved as, as an actor? As an actor? Well, you know what? Look, I love acting and it's, it's hard to say, you know, one role or one job is better than the next because I just love every production that I'm in. Yeah. But I also produce um, children's videos. So this kind of ties into that because um, my, my daughter has autism. Oh, yeah. And so I produce children's videos with puppets about children with disabilities and autism awareness. Uh, so I recently produced a, a little short film called Dudlington the Different, which is about a little elephant with autism, with Asperger's syndrome. Um, it's based on my daughter. She's now a young woman. She's now 25 years old. And she's great. She's got a full-time job and as a kindergarten teacher, and she's oh, doing nice. great. Yeah, yeah. But the story is based on her as a child. Um, so those are the types of things that are really, really near and dear to me. Um, your question was, you know, my accomplishments and what I value the most. I probably those of projects more so than acting in theater or in TV. Nice. Yeah. It's amazing to hear though. That's yeah. such a good um, focus to have, especially related back to your daughter, as you said. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people, there's a stigma with people with, uh, you know, on the autism spectrum that they can't function in society and, you know, that you have to walk on eggshells around them. But quite honestly, you don't, um, you know, Yes, there are people with more severe types of autism. There's a whole spectrum, you know, to autism. Uh, my daughter is on the, I don't like to say higher part of the spectrum, but she, you know, she can get by in life, um, yeah. you know, without the help of, of me and my wife. Uh, she's very independent and, um, you know, but there are a lot of, there's a lot of stigmatism. And what I'm trying to do is to teach other children how to, become friends with somebody who's on the spectrum um, because there's a lot of bullying going on, you know, yeah. with our kids. And so if we could just convey that, you know, people on the spectrum, just see the world a little bit different than the rest of us. Um, I think that's half the battle right there. You know, it's understanding people on the spectrum and learning to deal with their, you know, I guess, you know, their peculiar behavior, you know? Yeah. No, I totally, yeah, I totally get where you're coming from. Yeah. yeah. I suppose we need to open our eyes a bit more to the difference of people going forward. So. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and so do you have any other focuses that you would like to pursue down the line? Um, what I would like to pursue. Yeah. I mean, um, I would like to, direct and write a feature film. I've written a couple of screenplays. I uh, just finished one recently that I've been working on for about two years. Um, I grew up in New York City as a kid. Um, I grew up in a very tough Italian-Irish neighborhood okay. in Astoria, Queens, New York. Do you ever see the movie Goodfellas? Uh, no, I've heard of it, though. Okay. Well, it's, you know, like the mafia and things yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, these types of people were like my neighbors, <laughs> pretty oh, much. Right. <laughs> so, um, when I was a kid, me and my, my little mates running around the neighborhood, we were like exposed to all of that. And so basically the story is about that whole world seen through a child's eyes, you know? Um, ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's basically the thing that, uh, that's a goal of mine to get that, that screen paper. Well, play that's, not really, that's, that's not really cool if you can get that yeah. out there one day. Yeah. Uh, so are you focused on anything at the moment? Right now, no, unfortunately, the pandemic really, you know, hit us big time here in South Florida. I was doing a show called How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. And I had a couple of really great roles in that. I had a couple of good songs. And I was doing that when the pandemic hit. And wow. so we had to stop literally a couple of days before we opened. So we only got to do the dress rehearsal with an invited audience. But, you know, we never actually got to do the show. So things just stopped dead for us here in South Florida. Slowly, things are starting to get back on track. Um, so once they do, I imagine I'll be doing some more shows again here in Florida. 
But no, okay. nothing else. That, that sucks to hear. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> How are things happening over there? How are things getting on over there? Yeah, well, hopefully by Monday, all the restrictions should be gone. So in, ter in terms of what travel and just public places and things like that. Uh, so masks, uh, I think social distancing. Um, yeah. I think, yeah, I think travel as well. I think we should be able to travel to European countries at least. So, oh, okay. If you have the Very job. Good. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're getting there slowly, but surely. Good. <laughs> good. Uh, can so I, can I ask you a question? Tell me a little bit about your, you have, um, you have a couple of sites, right? You have a couple of groups um, regarding like um, like science fiction or, or, or Comic-Con type of things. Is that you? Were you the person I spoke to about that? Uh, I don't think so. You don't? Okay. Okay. I'm confusing you with another Adam, I think. <laughs> uh, what, was, what was it about? No, no. I mean, I'm somewhat of a Comic-Con type of nerd. <laughs> so, oh, I, I love Comic-Cons as well. Yeah. You know, I, we're friends on Facebook, aren't we, Adam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I, I think maybe I had mentioned it because I had mentioned a couple of things about some of the Marvel movies, and I think you had liked them. So I said, oh, yeah, this this young man's a geek like me, too. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, well, I love Marvel because I re recently watched uh, Black Widow. So I saw that yesterday, and I, I was blown away by it. I thought it was really intense. I thought the acting was great. And uh, I think uh, Florence Pugh is amazing. I think yes. she just fantastic job. Uh, in that role, uh, but I'm completely addicted to the Marvel Universe. I, I simply can't get enough of it. When I was a kid, I collected Marvel comics. Oh, I nice. used to get, yeah, I used to get an allowance from my parents for, you know, being a good little boy. Every week <laughs> I would get, I'd get one dollar. And with that one dollar, I was able to buy four comic books, four Marvel comic books. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it got to the point where I had thousands of comic books. I had like X-Men number 18 and I had, I had some really valuable comic books. And I'll never forget, my family moved to California. We wound up coming back to New York, but when we made the initial move, my mother left the box of comic books in New York. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, heartbreak. <laughs> yeah. She's felt guilty about it for years. I think on my 25th birthday, she gave me a box of comic books to try to make up for it, but they were really, really horrible comic books. <laughs> they were like, they were like, I don't know, a comic book group that nobody's ever heard of and it was terrible. So <laughs> slowly but surely, I had to build up my own my own collection again. So. Oh, nice. Well, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, well, Marvel Cinematic Universe is definitely my favorite um, universe to, to watch all the, all the time. Yeah, and I love the originality that they're doing. So they're not actually following step by step all the details in previous stories in the actual comic books, but yeah. they're making some changes. And some of the changes, are, are, in my opinion, are for the better, you know. Um, I just think they're so well done. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely a, a Marvel nerd. <laughs> yeah, especially with all the content coming out as well with Loki, Black Widow and the rest oh, of the yeah. stuff coming out. Love, I, I can't get enough of uh, Disney Plus and the Marvel TV shows. Yeah, yeah, it's been amazing. Wakanda forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can't wait to watch Black Panther 2 next year. Is it next year? Wow. Right, right. Um, so I want to ask you a couple more questions and that's, um, so what do you have planned down the line? Well, again, just, uh, you know, doing a lot of theater, um, trying to work on getting my film made. Um, I would imagine I need some investors for that. So that's going to take some time. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, just taking it easy. You know, I'm, I'm in my 50s now. I'm, I'm not a, a young, young man anymore, but I still got enough stamina where I could, you know, work and still run around on stage like uh, like the young kids at the show is hired. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, no, I just, you know, keep working, keep supporting my family, keep doing what I love, you know, and um I've learned a lot, you know, over the past few years. I've learned to grow up quite a bit, um, you know, pretty much late in life. So what I have learned, most important, if we take away anything from this interview, um, what I have learned is to be nice to everyone. Yes. <laughs> be nice to everyone, because first of all, you should. Morally, it's right. But also, you, you know, professionally, you never know, you know, if down the road, you're going to have to answer those people who you uh, weren't too nice to in the past. So Of course. Be yeah, nice, definitely. Be nice to everyone. Yeah. Well, thank you, Paul. Was, it's been great talking to you today. Thank you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, Take care. Yeah, um, if Alfie ends up being, you know, good down the line, we can do the oh, two. Yeah. We can talk down the line again, so. Yeah, yeah, He's Alfie wanted to take part in this, and he's going to probably at a later date, um, so maybe fine. we can do another one with both of us, but um, he is preparing for surgery. I, I'm 
I'm here at his house actually, and he's resting in his bed, but he's preparing for surgery. So, um, you know, he, he wants to take care of that and that's totally understandable, yeah. but, uh, yeah, so we'll definitely do something in the near future. Okay, Adam. Awesome. Nice one. Well, thank you for this again. Take care. All right. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.